Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is David. I'm here representing the great people at uh, Delta Products Corporation and uh, Delta Networking, one of its uh, subsidiaries. Uh, I'll be talking to you today about uh, the white box model and where the market is and uh, what, why we need OCP's help to uh, take us further. So, um, I mean, where we are in the industry now is that we're kind of we're witnessing this massive transformation that's occurring um, and it's fueled by the open source community and the realization that the models over the last few decades no longer scale to meet the next generation infrastructure requirements of, of our customers. Um, today I'll focus on networking uh, and I'll share some of the great things that we're doing at Delta to uh, help our customers be successful. Um, what is very, very clear to our customers and ourselves is that the disaggregated model, um, when associated with white box and bright box platforms, and the, the power of the software-defined software ecosystem, it's like it's too compelling. It's too compelling to ignore this. So that's why more and more people, more and more customers are moving from their paper specifications to proof of concepts and even proof of concepts into actually production deployments. So this is real and we need OCP to help enable this sort of market and this uh, transformation. So over the last couple of years, uh, we have seen the Open Compute project sort of evolve being, from being a platform that looks like it was supporting the infrastructure needs of a few to a, now a, 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 a platform where it actually is trying to address the needs of the broader open market. So with the tr recent changes that have occurred in OCP in the networking project chair, as well as the project list expansions to include our telco customers that uh, Delta and along with its uh, white box subsidiary Ajima Systems is very proud to announce its continued support of OCP and along that we're actually increasing our partnership level to, to the platinum level. So we, uh, we definitely see a very positive trajectory for OCP um, but in, later on in the slides you'll see that we'll, we're going to be asking uh, OCP to, to help this model evolve into something uh, real and, and tangible. So with this uh, additional level of support, I want to make two critical announcements on behalf of Ajima Systems, uh, that is our white box uh, branding line. The first, first is our, our deep buffered uh, carrier grade edge switch. This is uh, based on the Broadcom Jericho Plus silicon and it complements our, our AGC 7648 Qumran line that is already in the hands of, of our customers. So in addition to the, the high density 25 gig and 100 G ports, the platform includes service provider carrier features such as Sinkey 1588 and external TCAM expansion, which is essential for expanding the, to the table sizes that service providers require. There is a movement in the, from our customers to, to support more and more microservices actually embedded in the networking. So to do that, we're going to be standardizing on uh, Xeon class x86 uh, CPU subsystems. We will be uh, supporting, or we are supporting, uh, BMC infrastructure to allow customers to manage their networking products as if they were uh, servers. And uh, from a software support infrastructure, we, our standard uh, deliverable is an only install environment and we're also augmenting that with uh, uh, ONL to actually broaden the, the, uh, the software partner ecosystem base. The second, second announcement that we have is more focused in the data center space, and this is uh, really ideally suited for a data center spine and edge of row applications. It's the Tomahawk 2 based uh, 64 by 100 gig solution. Uh, we're actually, uh, this is well along the way in, in development. It's all ports are up, all traffic's passing, and we're actually preparing the uh, uh, submission material for OCP. So uh, we are um, we're carrying on uh, hardening this design, um, but so this will be coming soon to the OCP for, uh, for review. So, um, so people aren't necessarily familiar with Delta uh, in terms of how it's actually working to deliver solutions to our customers. So this was like a um, beginning of a slide here where it, it kind of helps communicate some of, some of the, the history of what uh, Delta has achieved. And so 
It's, it's really sort of founded with a commitment to delivering the world's best energy efficient solutions. Um, it was instrumental in delivering 110 megawatt net solar uh, thermal power station in uh, Tonopah, Nevada. Um, it's actually uh, d uh, has an, a net zero uh, building architecture at its HQ in Fremont. And this is the second platinum certified energy efficient building in, in California. So um, that and, in, and also in addition with a, a focus on industrial solutions and, and smart manufacturing, what we're trying to say, what I'm trying to say in this slide is that we very much in the, in the company, we have a focus on, on solutions and delivering, and delivering solutions to customers. So then when we combine Delta networking, so Delta networking has 25 years of experience working with the tier one networking companies um, that we all know uh, as an ODM partner. Um, in addition uh, to an ODM model, it's, it supports a full turnkey model, software on top of hardware and, and support uh, for, for markets such as the Soho smart grid and um, broadband market. Uh, most people don't know, but we need to do a better job marketing this, is actually Delta has its own set of transceivers. So we have a full portfolio of 100G transceivers for the data center market. Uh, we're also very committed as a company to helping customers make that transition from 100G to 200G to 400G, and we'll be delivering uh, those types of uh, products uh, towards the end of the year. So, and uh, if, uh, if you want to know more, then please, we, have, we actually have our, our optical transceiver um, team here to actually talk to uh, any customers. Um, one other uh, interesting thing, value propositions for, for Delta is that we actually also act as a CM for uh, transceivers, so if you have any special requirements or any onboard optics uh, needs, then we can actually help you uh, realize those, that differentiation. So, um, Egema, Egema, which is the white box brand uh, under Delta. So, we, so, so, as I said earlier on, we're trying to build a solutions focus. Um, and doing that takes time and it relies on building great partnerships and, and uh, also it requires a certain organization to be able to um, make that materialize and be successful. So, so under, under the Delta, so the Ed, Edgemer is a brand, so what can it rely on? So it, it can rely on certain key components that, that the actual Delta uh, company can actually deliver to it. So from, from AOCs, transceivers, fans, power supplies, you can, always, you can build an Edgemer platform from that. Um, in addition, we have uh, kind of more of the uh, sort of the warehouse scale, data center scale infrastructure, power, cooling, um, backup capabilities, and, ra and rack solutions. I think we're also uh, we're participating in the OCP uh, uh, 48 volt uh, rack initiative, um, and I think we have uh, people here that can talk to that at, at the booth. Um, within the uh, so on top, of, on top of what the Delta Corporation can provide, we actually have DNI's full portfolio of ODM solutions that can be brought to bear um, to the market if, uh, as needed. So as an example today, the white box model is maybe viewed as synonymous with pizza boxes, uh, but now we are entertaining more and more conversations around chassis deployments and, and working with um, the same ecosystem partners to enable the white box at the kind of the chassis level. So um, from a software perspective and an ecosystem perspective, um, some of you may not be able to see all of this. Uh, so we're very proud to be working with some of these uh, software pioneers and participating and sponsoring uh, some of these open source communities to enable our service provider uh, enterprise and uh, data center customers. So we, we find ourselves being uh, reached out to and we are, reach out, uh, being re uh, we are reaching out to the experts in the industry and it's clear that there's more and more differentiation that, that uh, um, uh, from a cost perspective, from a technology perspective, from a flexibility perspective that our customer base seems to, seems to be very excited by. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I couldn't help myself, but I put uh, as testament to this, I put some of, uh, some of our, uh, our ecosystem partner quotes up here, um, which demonstrates we've got commitment from the, the hardware levels, the, the software levels, and, and uh, interesting, from an ecosystem perspective, uh, uh, we're, we're also working on solutions, use case solutions for the, 
for um, more of these sort of multi-site cloud orchestration levels. So this is my last slide. And this is more like a messaging to the OCP uh, community as a whole. So um, I'll use this example, right? So a customer asserted to us recently that a platform accepted by the OCP means to them that any software operating system can be ported to it with little to no effort. And so there, i.e. there's a fundamental assumption that all hardware accepted and, and blessed by the OCP is, is effectively the same. And uh, so although I think although this is close in some use cases, uh, I posit that in the interest of sort of developing a very healthy and broad white box business model, that the goal for OCP should also focus also, or should, should include the standardization of OPI, open APIs and hardware abstraction layers. And, and that OCP compliance should move from a use case, uh, well, it should move from a kind of a specification definition level, but to also include a, a certification at the interoperability level. Today, it, it has some of that at the sort of the layer one uh, level but we are now seeing um, that there's more and more interest in, in actually performing interoperability at the sop software level. So I'm happy to announce that, that we're working with the UNH I, uh, IOL team under uh, uh, David Wolf, and uh, we're starting to actually create the uh, use cases in these particular, for these particular markets, uh, um, and actually these will be uh, rolling into the interoperability and certification project in OCP. So, we welcome everybody's participation and support uh, within that project to help uh, make interoperability successful and help sort of establish white, the white box model as a, a, as a true go-to-market model that customers um, uh, can buy into. So uh, the second, second issue that, that um, I've observed that I, I'd like to review further with the OCP community is, is around licensing. So in the same way that our software partners don't release they don't release everything into open source. And those, those software partners are the ones that are trying to make money. So in the same way that they, they don't release everything to open source, again, I, uh, I think that model and the recognition that there's IP and hardware needs to be respected by the OCP. And I think that what I would like to see is, is, is a, a, an evolution of the licensing framework to recognize that the, to be, to enable success in an open environment, it doesn't mean to say that everything has, the whole kitchen sink has to be handed over and reviewed. And so what I would like to do is, is entertain a licensing and certification model that is, as I said before, is, that, is that, that included at that functional level. So that's pretty much all I had to say. And um, so I thank you. Uh, please visit us, we're over there. Um, we'd love to have the conversation with you. If you want to be interested in the, as an ecosystem partner, uh, we'd love to have those conversations too. Okay, thank you.